Thank you. Good morning. For my, who, who are my Tanzanian colleagues? You are, aha, habari za sabwish, come on. Um, and bonjour and to everyone just it is such an honor and a privilege to be to be part of this room I was excited to see the participants from so many different countries and from so many women in the room and youth and representing all that we do I am very grateful as part of the introduction said I have been working off and on in Africa since 1997. And I most recently in my current position as a deputy assistant administrator, I focus on our office of West Africa, which includes all of coastal West Africa and Sahel, as well as our office for sustainable development which includes all of the development initiatives that are supported by USAID in 43 countries on the continent. So I'm very excited for this opportunity. I apologize that uh, the, the time is short. I thought what I would do is share a bit about USAID's priorities and what we do and then really leave time for questions about our security partnerships and opportunities. I have already been told that the group asks good questions and this is the last day of three weeks. So I am to be prepared for an active discussion. Um, so I will make sure to leave some few, some few moments for that. So with that, let me share first just um, a few broad discussion, broad points about what USAID focuses on on the continent. Can I just ask to make sure you are awake? Who has heard of USAID in your country? You have heard, you've heard of it. Okay, so, so most, and who has some idea of what we do? If I was to give you an exam, you would pass. Oh, <laughs> it depends on the marking scheme. That is a good answer. Okay, so I will give just very, very broad, broad strokes. We had the opportunity just yesterday to, uh, to, to meet with our US Congress to advocate for our 2024 budget uh, to continue our development assistance work. And so I want to pull some of the highlights. First of all, I don't have to tell this group that Africa is home to one of the fastest growing economies in the world. We know that by 2050, one in four people on, in the world will be African. And it is an important moment because the world is recognizing Africa's importance. And here in the United States, we've had the opportunity to host the Africa Leaders Summit with many heads of state from countries that are here in the room. We have a new United States strategy towards Africa that emphasizes partnership and collaboration. And it is under these umbrellas that USAID does our work. I also understand that in the room today, we have a youth representative and just we recognize as USAID as we do our work, the importance of working with young people. Guess for me, the median age right now in Africa. I know you are not used to shouting out, but try, but I know in security, okay, but try. What do you think is the median age right now? 
Or 21? 25, 21. Yeah, according to the, the work that we do as we were preparing just recently for our vice president's vi visit, the median age is 19 years old. That is our audience, a quickly growing population with a median age of 19. I don't know for people in the room, but my children are older than 19. <laughs> so to imagine that is our audience. For USAID, we have worked partnering with African countries for the past 60 years. And we just celebrated our anniversary. We, since 1990, we have worked with over 700 million people in helping to lift out of poverty, helping to reduce deaths from HIV and malaria, stopping Ebola in its tracks, and making sure that we partner on global health security preparedness. Broadly speaking, our objectives are around advancing peace and security, building sustainable, inclusive African economies, increasing economic growth, revitalizing democracy, and rebuilding resilience after the pandemic, which we all know took such a toll in our sectors of education and health in particular. So let me touch briefly on what we are doing in those areas, and then we will have our discussion. So on peace and security, I don't have to tell the people in, in the room that according to our Fragile States Index, 11 of the 15 most fragile states in the world are in Sub-Saharan Africa. And we recognize that through our partnership, we have something called the Global Fragility Act, which my colleagues from the State Department and Department of Defense may have mentioned. But we have a new strategy to prevent conflict and advance uh, stability. And we are working in partnering with civil society, security forces, the Defense Department, and other partners to really reduce the drivers of instability and violent extremism. We also, in my area, are very focused on our regional strategy in the Sahel. So I'm just making sure you're awake. Who's from a country in the Sahel? The Sahel, where am I? Okay, my colleagues are here. I'm just making sure you are staying awake. Um, so across the Sahel, we are partnering. We have our Sahel strategy where we look across humanitarian assistance, human rights, women's leadership. On economic growth, we are looking at expanding the markets for more economies. You may have heard of initiatives such as Prosper Africa, which helps increase business, increase trade and opportunities with the US, as well as Africa to Africa trade across the continent. We are looking at private sector investment. Since the launch of our Prosper Africa initiative, our economic growth priority, we've helped close more than 1,000 deals across 49 countries for 65 billion US dollars. So it is an emphasis to increase the economic strength and capacity of Africa. We also have an initiative that is called Nous avons une initiative aussi qui s'appelle Power Africa, uh, Puissance Africa. Afrique, c'est pour uh, l'électricité. Nous venons d'avoir notre dixième anniversaire. Nous fournissons access to electricity across the continent. On democracy, we work to with civil society 
and with state governments with marginalized populations. Nous travaillons avec les gouvernements d'État pour les sociétés. And then finally, post COVID-19 pandemic in particular, a continued emphasis on health and education. In health, we have our PEPFAR initiative, our President's Malaria Initiative that are helping to address HIV AIDS and malaria and provide maternal and child health services across the continent. We also have our global food security and hunger focus that is focused on helping with agriculture and economy. And then finally, equitable access to education and making sure to expand education. So the way that we work is we have five-year strategies that we create with country governments. And then within those five years, we write descriptions of programs that will help achieve those goals. So if it is in health or in education or agriculture or nutrition or addressing issues of climate or security, we write a description of what we want done. In many cases, we have a competitive process. People apply for that funding and it's competitive for local organizations, for international organizations. We also have competitions for private sector so that we can increase our engagement with private sector companies to work on the continent. And then we also have funding that we do without competition that goes to some of the regional bodies like the Sahel Alliance, like the United Nations, like to help some of the broader work that's done on the continent, as well as direct funding to host country governments. So if there is a ministry of health or a ministry of local government or a ministry that is working on some of these priorities, we also have direct assistance to host country governments, mostly through the ministries of finance. So broadly speaking, those are the priorities on which we work. Specific to the way that we work with peace and security, we believe we know that many of the drivers are instabil of instability are because people are exploiting the fact that it is difficult for populations to access basic services. So we believe there is a link. When people don't have access to education, to health, to programming, there's increased opportunity for extremists or others to leverage those groups and to take advantage. So we believe development has an important role in engaging to make sure that we can advance security, that we can increase civil society engagement to help address some of the peace and, and stability issues. So broadly speaking, that is our piece of the puzzle. And I am very happy to answer questions, to discuss uh, issues and opportunities to engage with USAID in, in your sectors, in your countries, as a partner in, in the work that we are doing. Thank you so much.